the world can't be and continue the way it is and get better and really be beautiful if we don't get you guys back. We are championing men. This is what this podcast is about. As a woman, to be actually doing the masculine energy thing for us is mm. exhausting. So what I always tell men is don't do it the way the feminist movement did. Have a movement where we can get you guys back. Misconceptions that men might have about women. Mm -hmm. So I've been hearing a lot about this, this whole like six, 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 well, four sixes, I should say, which is like six feet tall, six figures, six inch penis and six packs. Mm -hmm. And that no women want to do, have anything to do with you unless you meet this criteria. Make us feel safe. That is the most important thing. We're going to talk about a little bit about what could impact your erection. Foods that are high in vitamin C, they actually could make your... There's also the idea of the way you grip your penis during masturbation because sometimes no vagina can really mimic that. The fluffer, there is someone who comes in between takes and they just fluff you up and to get you hard again. It takes us 30 minutes on average to literally get us to the point where we don't need lubrication or we don't need someone to like spit on their hand or anything like that, where we really almost are begging you for it. Stay away from asparagus. And that personal smell, those pheromones are also key. And we want you to have a space where you are supported by women. We do need our men to, to stand for who they are and how they are. Hi everyone, I'm here with Angie Andrade one of my dear friends and an excellent, amazing, integrative nutrition coach, I should say. Welcome to the show, Angie. Thank you. Thank you so much for welcoming me here. I've been wanting to be part of this for a while. And I know that you've been building and creating a lot of really fun stuff and men really need the attention. So I'm so happy to be able to pitch in and uh, shine a light on what is there and also learn from each other's opinion too. And yeah. It's fun. And share what we've, what we've learned along the way working with them. Um, I mean, you have clients that are women and men, but we get people that really open up a lot to us and they really tell us about what they're dealing with. And sometimes I'm shocked at the level of openness and comfort that and trust that someone gives, gives me. I don't know. And do you feel like the same? Do you feel that people really trust you with, with yeah. what they're dealing with, what they're going through? Absolutely. And it takes a little bit of a while to get comfortable and to get in the comfort zone with someone, especially with someone that's never met you. But mm. also sometimes the fact that you have someone that's never met you, that means it's someone who won't judge you. Right. Just as we judge sometimes our family members or people who are the closest to us. Yeah, so true. when you're working with someone that you don't know at that level, then the relationship completely changes. And I think it's a powerful combination whenever you actually end up also trusting people because it takes a while to also have that trust. Yeah. Yeah. I'm getting that a lot actually from a lot of the men that I work with and people that I'm learning about and meeting on YouTube that there's a huge trust issue mm -hmm. between men and women and, and mm -hmm. men. And I, and this is like kind of what we want to discuss. I think it's, there's a lot of misconceptions about what's important to women in terms of like penis, right? Everything penis. We're kind of going to talk everything penis and nutrition and exercise. We brought our worlds together and any kind of like sex coaching, but I, you know, because I have the honor of, of really being with these clients of mine and them opening up and sharing with me what they're dealing with and what they're going through. And a lot of the times they don't realize that it's a misconception. It's not really necessarily the truth. And it's definitely a lot of the times, not what we as women want. So we're going to, we're here to debunk some of that stuff to spread some love to the men out there let, letting you know that not all women are against mm -hmm. you that we are women who champion men and champion men's health and mental health and your masculinity your sense of adventure and just being able to really live your life full of joy so welcome also gentlemen <laughs> <laughs> so i've also known angie for many many years we're really great friends like basically we're family or parents also know each other. And so, mm -hmm. so this really is a podcast of love. <laughs> so Angie, tell us a little bit about yourself, a little bit about your background in terms of your integrative nutritional coaching. And I been doing this since 2008. Literally, I decided to, that this is what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. 
the moment that I started studying nutrition and I started doing that because I was having a lot of health problems. Mm. I had anxiety, I had depression, I had weight gain, I had uh, my skin was not doing well. Mm, I remember, Just yeah. everything, everything that could go wrong was going wrong with my health. And at some point I ended up going to the doctor and the doctor is like, well, you got to be on this and this and that. I was counting at least seven different types of pills and medication to do. Mm. And I didn't know for how long I would have to attach myself to this type of ingredients that could cause something different in my body. But I understood that there was one thing that I really enjoyed and that was food. So I said to myself, maybe I should just learn the way I could heal myself mm. because the way I am leading my life and what I was putting in my system was making me sick. But what if what I ate also made me well? But also there was a lot of stress and anxiety that I was dealing with. So I needed to change and fix what was going on with my mind. Mm. At the same time, practice on changing what was going on with my body. Mm. And once that took place, I understood that I had a magic formula for becoming healthier. I became healthier. And then after that, of course, I went to nutrition school because I wanted to learn how to do it without taking pills at that level. So I practiced it, I graduated, and I started a wellness company after. And what I do now is that I service one-on-one -on -one, uh, fitness and nutrition services. And I do also that with companies, mm. do corporate wellness. And it's just a lot of fun. But yeah, it's in, oh my God, it's 2008, 2008. Oh, my, God. Oh, my goodness, time flies. Yeah, it does. Well, whatever you're eating is working out well for you. Thank you so much. Yes, yes. I've known you through this whole journey and, you know, getting your health to where you wanted it to, as well as building this business and the impact that you've made on your client's life. And you said something interesting. You said that you knew you weren't well. It was creating a lot of anxiety. I think that we don't realize the power of our exercise and our food and how it's related to our mental health. You know, 90% of our serotonin is created in our gut. And we don't realize that what we put in our body is so important. Obviously, also what we put, what we consume in terms of social media, with the people that we have around us in terms of energetic work, which is a lot of what I do. And men are really working out and understanding that it's not just the physical, the way you look, even though, hey, the reality is we like to look good, right? We're vain. It is. But beyond that, there are huge benefits that come along with exercising daily, sweating daily, getting your heart rate up daily. It increases your testosterone levels. It makes you feel good. It reduces stress. It makes you sleep better. And we all know that actually, if you just think about it, sleeping better, right, Ange, actually is really great for your building and, and, and elevating your testosterone levels. A lot of people are over caffeinated. They are sleep deprived. They're not eating well. They're eating a lot of empty calories, a lot of sugar, and they're just not, you know, really feeling their best. And I see it with a lot of my clients. And that's one of the first questions that I ask, like, what is your exercise routine? And what does your nutrition look like? Because it's just as important as what you're consuming online, what you're consuming in terms of who you're hanging out with, how you're spending your time. So this is interesting, because a lot of men put as much importance into the fact that they really have such a powerful key really close to them. And I get it. It's, it's If you're not used to cooking and you're not used to working out, it's like learning a new language, mm -hmm. right? It's like me saying, hey, you know what? You're going to learn Mandarin and it's difficult, but it's really going to you know bring great opportunities in your life. Mm -hmm. And these benefits, these health opportunities and benefits that you gain from working out and exactly. eating well are just essential. This is why I wanted Ange to come on the show because mm -hmm. it's uh, it's something that I hear probably from every single client. Yeah. You well, know. I, I think the hardest thing is that people don't connect that. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, for example, maybe in, um, in your field, you talk to people and there is emotional issues and it's just hard to be like, what are you eating? What I eat have to do with how I'm feeling. Now Absolutely. for me, for what I do, 
sometimes I ask, are you fulfilled in your life? What is mm. going on? Are you, you know, are you, are you working extra hours? What is it that you're doing? And they're like, wait, why are you talking to me about emotional stuff? I just right. want to talk about nutrition. I'm like, that is part of also nutrition because how are you nourishing yourself? The way you nourish your environment doesn't only have to do with what you are eating, but what are you also digesting emotionally with what is around you? Right. So oh my God. Yes. it's very weird that you probably see it on your side. I see it on mine too. Right. And they're like, why do you want to talk emotional when I want to talk about food? And with you, they're probably like, why do you want to talk about yeah. food? Well, yeah. we're talking emotional. That's true. What does that have to do with it? And I'm like, well, it actually has to do a lot with it. Everything. 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 And, and I think anybody who's ever made that transition where they've committed to really growing and investing in their well-being, it's an emotional thing. And, it, you know, some people come to me because they want to meet a partner or they want to in my case, gain confidence. And that's a perfect, like mm -hmm. it makes what you just said is like, how, what is what I eat and how I, I mean, working out, I guess, yeah, it could be more relatable, but what does that have to do with my level of confidence? Mm -hmm. And it really, really does. Because if you're sleeping well, you're eating well, you're working out, you're breathing, you know, we don't even breathe properly a lot of the times. Mm -hmm. And some of the exercises that I do with clients who have higher levels of anxiety when speaking with people in social settings or speaking with women or, you know, wanting to go and get that job that they want to get or standing up for what they believe in. You know, there's a lot of stuff going on out there where, where women are putting men in situations where it's not fair, you know, whether it's through a divorce or it is through mm, making accusations and blowing situations out of proportion that are not necessarily mm -hmm. valid at all. How do you deal with that? Right? Like, a lot of men say, how should I deal with this? If your mind is calm and your and your body is nourished and you've slept well and you have good people around you, those things will just come naturally. You'll know how to deal with those crazy situations that do come up in life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's kind yeah. of like an overall rounded kind of view of how you can keep yourself healthy, both emotionally and physically and sometimes that is a blind spot unfortunately you yeah. know it's like what is it that i'm not seeing i'm doing this right and what is it maybe your mind is not up to all the pressure you're putting on it or maybe you're putting too much pressure on your body with the stuff that you are feeding it but you're blaming it all on your emotions or you're blaming it all on the other way around it so stress, you have to understand right? that it's all an ecosystem within you yes and all is part of you both issues, happiness, and also what you're feeding yourself. Yeah, and, and I guess this is a great way to like segue into uh, sexual health, right? Absolutely. Sexual Absolutely. health is completely correlated with your mind, your heart for men, right? Mm -hmm. When we talk a lot about ED and when, when I've been entrusted by clients to talk about the sensitive issue of what that feels like to deal with that. And, and it ranges in ages. It's not just older men, as you think, which that usually can be because of hormone issues or age, you know, I'm seeing a younger and younger uh, group of men who are also experiencing ED. And I you know, for the most part, when we discuss it, a lot of it does have to do with the mindset around sex, around connection, around, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the women and men, especially for the younger generations, I feel like there's a huge disconnect between women and men in general, but in, with the younger generation. And there's also the component of nutrition that, that an exercise, exercise is huge that impacts ed as well as porn you know not that there's anything wrong with porn if it's used for entertainment purposes right it's uh it is hollywood it's naked hollywood i call it mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it's not real i have spoken with porn stars that have shared with me that you know they kind of have a vanilla lifestyle with their with their partner mm -hmm. in real life because it is just entertainment. So there's nothing wrong if you're using porn for entertainment to spice things up, you know, to just, you know, for yourself. But when it becomes something that you depend on, it could definitely also impact your mm -hmm. ability to get an erection. So we're going to talk about a little bit about what could impact your erection. Also, we're going to talk about what's in the mind of women in terms mm -hmm. of penises. I, there's so many misconceptions about women and what we really look for. And I think 
that has also been impacted with porn. I think men have a skewed view of what the actual penis size that women need to really enjoy themselves, mm -hmm. as well as what re women really, really want in the bedroom because it is just acting. They do just stop and record and get the right angle and all that. And that's not really what's happening in it's the real lot. world. It's <laughs> fake. Everything is fake. Yeah. Everything is fake. <laughs> yes. Yes, it's true. And actually, I was having a conversation with some women friends of ours before doing this podcast. And because there's this whole myth around size. And so, so well, let's start with that, because I think that that's always on the mm -hmm. forefront of men's minds. I know that every man wonders for the most part if theirs is big enough or is it okay or is it nice and it's a massive amount of pressure you know i mean we do it to ourselves too we gain five pounds and we we feel like you know we're not attractive and men don't see that like my partners when i've gained a little weight or whatever i'm having a moment they look at me and they're like are you crazy you look great and i'm like oh my god no so we have to start believing each other. <laughs> it's mental. It's a mental thing. It starts in the mind. Sometimes we just get stuck in it. Yeah, we get really yeah. stuck in it. Yeah, and this is where the performance anxiety tends to come up for men. You know, for men that don't have a ED issue based on hormones or circulation issues, which is why it's so important to understand mm -hmm. that your heart is related to your penis, <laughs> just like your brain is also related to your penis as well. And especially for us women, our mind is very connected to our vagina, <laughs> yeah. right? Although I don't like this word so much, but to our, our genitalia, our, our flowers, yeah. our flowers. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, let, Ange, do you have any info that you can share about, you know, the relationship between heart health and penis health? Heart health and penis health. Well, I feel like you really, and it's not only, that's not only for men, but also for women, you have to really be in it and in the moment for this type of thing. Your heart is not in it. It's not going to feel good. For women, you know, for all these women, it'll be like, okay, there is a little bit of humidity or whatever going on. <laughs> but for men, it's the erection, which is what they talk about. Right. So if your mind is not in it, there is either dryness or there is no erection going on. Mm -hmm. So there is a big, big, big part of it is your brain. And if your brain is not in it, yeah, then... Th Sometimes people start taking things, pills, or they start looking at porn, or they start doing certain things in order to be enhanced. But in reality, you want to really not wear a Band-Aid. You want to really get to the bottom of what is it that's causing it. Mm. What are you doing? What are you taking? What are you not taking? What are you not doing mm. that's making you go there? Aside from the level of being human and having the stresses that we get yeah. every day sometimes you get a lot of stress that and it, you just let it overcome you right right but also there could be a part of you that is not nourishing yourself the right way aside from not nourishing yourself by getting a fog or having the right people around you you're also not nourishing yourself with the right foods mm. are you overdoing this are you overdoing that are you overdoing uh, heavy fats yeah. are you overdoing uh, lots of alcohol are you smoking all the time all of those things can prevent your body from really being focused in that and just the circulation time. i mean so yeah so you were talking more about like the heart and mind and penis mm -hmm. connection but i i guess where i'll take it is like the literal mm -hmm. fact that your heart we all know like if you eat too much saturated fat if you eat too many animal products if you eat things that we all know are bad for heart health mm -hmm. guess what it does the same thing to your penis because your penis yes. has veins arteries you know papillary the same thing so if you're clogging up your heart mm -hmm. you're also clogging up your, your all your veins arteries and, 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 and everything that basically brings the blood to the penis mm -hmm. and keeps it you're also impacting that and that's why cutting down on animal fats as well as 
exercise, it's like, think of it the same thing, way as you think of your heart. If you've noticed that you're sluggish, that you've noticed that your erection isn't as hard, if you've noticed that you're having problems, like, yes, if you're over consuming porn, that's something else because now you're having this overstimulation process. There's also the idea of the way you grip your penis during masturbation because sometimes no vagina can really mimic that. So I've heard this before from a client that he would sleep with a lot of women, but he couldn't actually like, you know, come. Mm -hmm. And when he explained it to me, he just said, and it was like, he just, the bottom line came was it was the grip that he had when he was masturbating. So I know it can seem like you, it's a de-stressor to masturbate. So I don't want to tell you not to because masturbation is healthy and it's good because you learn what you like, what you don't like. I think it connects you to yourself. It connects you to your sensuality, to your sexuality. But if you're overdoing it, just like you're overdoing the animal fats, mm -hmm. right? And you're overdoing all of it together. This can really impact the quality of your erection. And from what I've also heard from men, I don't know, and you know, and this happens to every man, every guy has had a moment where he just can't get an erection. And some women are cool and supportive and understand that because just like us, like it doesn't mean that we just get wet, like at mm -hmm. the drop of a dime, but men, unfortunately, there's a measurement for that. For us, we have things that we can do to kind mm -hmm. of, you know, w go past that, work through that. Men don't have that. And so that's when they end up getting in their mind, especially if they have a partner, whether it's a long-term partner or partner that's just for the moment where they can feel, you know, embarrassed and that's when they start getting in their psyche so there's you know are you taking care of your body but through nutrition mm -hmm. and through exercise and through not over consuming porn and, and i get it you know a lot of men in my case for my coaching use porn as emotional as a tool to emotionally regulate mm -hmm. you know a lot of us men and women are not taught as children how to emotionally regulate because let's be honest we're not born with instructions on how to be yeah. a human, how to be a parent, how to yeah. be a child, right? We are not, and it is a stress releaser. So it's like, you can't say, don't masturbate. It's kind of like you will also relieve stress. Exactly. By letting one out. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, you know, both women and men. Yes, of course. And masturbation is healthy and there's no, there's nothing wrong with it. I encourage it as long as it's not a substitution. Of course, there's people who, who have a harder time being able to have an actual human connection. Mm -hmm. And I get that. And, you know, I work on that with my clients as well. But in general, if we're talking about, you know, penis health, I do always, which is funny because you're absolutely right. I always suggest to every one of my clients, I ask about what their habits are in terms of exercise, nutrition, uh, porn, you know, usage, um, masturbation. And I think, yeah, sometimes they're like, why? Like, but, but then they realize like, it's kind of nice to be able to talk to someone about it. I'm zero judgment. I, for me, this is my world. I'm used to talking about these things. So I want to create a space that's comfortable mm -hmm. for, for men to be able to talk about these things, because I know that they're just like it is for women. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, um, it's not necessarily the easiest thing to talk about. So that's why we wanted to do like a little fun podcast. We even like got ourselves a little cocktail after a long week and <laughs> a literally a tiny one. And we just wanted to kind of talk about like fun stuff that that's Absolutely. been coming up and, and also, but at the same time, create some value for you out there. So, but it's a space also to know, to, you know, men out there need to know that we women care. We do care. You know, not only are we watching you, but we also care about your health. We, you know, we have parents, we have, have, a, have a brother, I have a father. So these are people that sometimes grow up in a way in which they don't talk about their emotions and their feelings and what they're dealing with. Exactly. So it's a great space in the fact that you're creating a room for a conversation about it. So to really be able to give the support, to be able to talk about it, we do have an opinion. We might always have an opinion anyways, but we also are supportive and can be supportive. Yes. And we want you to also know that not all women are against you. We understand the importance of men's roles in society. We value healthy masculinity, masculinity in general. Um, obviously there's, you know, just like there's toxic masculinity, there's toxic feminism, which has actually been horrible for society. 
that's a whole different conversation but which is which i do believe that there is a connection because i think that the whole toxic feminism what it's created is it's created and these women are shooting themselves in the foot honestly you know i think that the statistic is by 2030 50 percent of women will be single and childless <laughs> Yeah. And it's not about that you need to be in a relationship or that you need to necessarily have children. It's about connection. And I do think, in my opinion, you know, the reality is women are the gatekeepers of sex and men are the gatekeepers of commitment. And the sex is happening in both areas. So where's the breakdown? You know, do men and should men have to pay for the sins of the men from the past? No, I don't think so. Ange agrees with me on that. And we want you to know that, that there are women out there because we have an enormous amount of amazing friends who, who will share some of the other stuff that they shared about, you know, the other things that we'll discuss. And they are all rooting for you. We are championing men. This is what this podcast is about. And we want you to have a space where you are supported by women. And not all the guests will be women, but here in this particular instance, in this case, it's I'm here with a dear friend. We have great male friends. We have our fathers. We have our brothers. And we we love you guys. And we need you. Like, the world needs you. And we want you to know that. Mm -hmm. We want you to know that just because a percentage of people, just like there's really shitty men out there, there are really shitty women because there are really shitty people. And a lot of that programming, unfortunately, since in the last... I don't know, decade or so, it's really gotten really bad, I think has definitely made an impact on men, mm -hmm. men's health, sexual health, men's pride in being a man, their masculinity. And just like I want to be, you know, celebrated for being a woman, you guys want to be celebrated for being men. That's the reality. And so we're having fun. We're just kind of like, oh, let's just do this. We're just here together. We're going to go out to dinner after. And we wanted to get together and just let you know that we care. We need you. And we're here if you guys have any questions. We'd love to hear what you have to say about it. This is a very casual, mm -hmm. you know, friendly podcast. So, you know, we're just kind of doing it off the cuff. We did ask around to our friends this week and last week, I believe, about what, you know, misconceptions that men might have about women. Mm -hmm. So I've been hearing a lot about this, this whole like six, 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 well, four sixes, I should say, which is like six feet tall six figures, six inch penis and six packs. Hmm. And that no women want to do have anything to do with you unless you meet this criteria. That is not the truth. It's not accurate. Just like it's not accurate that men only want women that are a certain height, a certain weight, you know, look a certain way, behave a certain way. I think in general, men want women who make them feel good. And she can come in any kind of package. And women want the same. Hello. Yes. Women yes. want the same. Exactly. exactly. It's not her size. And it's not like you don't have to be like the porn star. Kind of, you're not there to be a porn star. Just have fun. Or like a model. Or, right. Right. And and to be honest with you, some of the best relationships I've had or the best. And I, we, I literally asked about 20 women this in the last week. And women always say they're like personality, vulnerability. I know that's hard for men because you're so programmed to always have to be strong. And we get that because our default setting is safety, right? Always having to be safe. Mm -hmm. And I think if women and men could understand just those two things that like our default setting is we have to be safe because even in the bedroom, when we feel safe is when we really let go and when we can really experience like a massive pleasure, orgasm, amazing orgasms and connection. And that's what men want to do when they're with us. They want to give us that. And I think the misconception comes in where men think that they always have to be strong, which means have the answer. And with sex, right? It's a dialogue. It's a connection. And especially for us women, the safety component Mm -hmm. I know it sounds crazy, but because like even if you're with your wife or your partner that you know for years, there's still the safety component there because the safety is deeply programmed into our brain, just like being strong and not being vulnerable is programmed into yours. And I guess if we could understand those two things about each other, I think that would really open up a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's just more about being present, really. Mm. And I think once you're present, you you know, if, if you can, for one minute, leave all your issues 
out the door, stop thinking about the office, stop thinking about what the next office project looks like or any of that. Once you can push that aside and really be truly present and in the moment, the rest comes. Yeah, because a lot of the times when women report that they're not able to reach orgasm with a partner, but yet they're able to reach orgasm on their own, a lot of it is because a lot of women are in their heads. Do I look okay? Am I okay? Mm -hmm. And do I, you know, men have an issue with their penis size. Women, some some women have an issue with how they how they smell down there. And I know that's crazy for for some people, but that mm -hmm. is actually it's actually pretty common in women. Do I look a certain way? Am I good? Like women want to also know mm -hmm. that, that we're good lovers versus and, and, as well as men. And I think that the connection, like you said, being present as well as is, is just getting what's important to get each other present. Exactly. Is, is key. And for women, we can, since we're sharing with these gentlemen is women need to feel safe. We need to feel safe in our relationship. We need to feel safe even in the bedroom, we need to know that's when you can really let go. And if you notice, those are the times that you feel the most connected, the most sensual, the most orgasmic. And the way to do that with women is to really lead them to it, you know, and the leading has to be ironically by slowing down. The more mm -hmm. you slow down, you know, it takes men an average of like, couple seconds or a minute or two to get aroused it takes us 30 minutes yeah. on average to literally get us to the point where we don't need lubrication or we don't need someone to like spit on their hand or anything like that <laughs> where we really almost are begging you for it and I think that when men are in their head they're moving at a rate sometimes that doesn't let us women, we feel like, oh my God, I have to hurry up and I have to be like, and also they like- move so much faster. Like, yeah. Guys, guys, slow down, you move too fast. Slow down. <laughs> you know, Always you slow need down. need to really slow down. Kiss like you're a teenager. Like, Kiss like you're a teenager. It's not your size. It's just how fast you're moving. It's how fast you're moving. It's, are you present? Look, look at her you know, touch her, do it slowly to the point, kiss, kiss like a teenager. I always say, remember when you were a teenager and you used to make out like, cause you know, that's all you were doing. And it was like, you, you know, you, I don't know, for me, it was the like two hour make out. Yeah. Sessions. I'm not saying you gotta do it for two hours, but I'm saying like, I'm get, looking at all of you, you know yeah. who you are, <laughs> <laughs> but, but get, get to the point where you can like be like, like there's no goal, you know, sometimes mm -hmm. also we live in a world that's all about orgasm and some of the best sex is actually the buildup and you don't necessarily always have to have an orgasm for it to be actually in Tantra. We learned that it is not actually about for men about ejaculation. There is a difference between orgasm and ejaculation. And that's a whole different, you know, podcast that I'm not going to get into in the moment at the moment, but it's all about slowing down, slowing down your breathing, slowing down, being in the moment, like Ange said, and trust me, she's going to, jump on like she's gonna beg you for it and you're not gonna have to wonder like what you're doing because there is a dialogue it's like a conversation that your body's having once you actually get out of your mind and you get into your body okay. so slow down guys that's always actually i'm gonna do a video about slowing down and giving you some techniques on how to do that and uh but the key is just slow down with women we are just slower when it comes to arousal we need more time and when we feel like we're on like a time crunch it kills it for us it kills it for us and it makes us also feel like we're not good enough like wait a second i'm not like those girls in the videos i'm not like you know who because that's again fake it's porn mm -hmm. wood porn wood the man, porn like, hollywood you know they get like a, the, what do they call it the fluffer there is someone who comes in between takes and they just fluff you up and to get your heart again yeah so even what you see in these movies in the porn is basically something that is not real literally there was someone in between takes just kind of like petting you until you rise again <laughs> so yeah. yeah yeah slow down women when they're in the moment and it feels good they're gonna guide they're gonna talk to you because why they're gonna feel safe because they're going to say, oh, I'm not in a rush. I'm not in a rush to be like these women. You know, you have to understand women are also have this pressure that now we have to be like these performers. And then so you're in the world of performance. We're in the world of performance. And what happens? Disconnect. Exactly. 
it's just it's just a disconnect exactly and so slowing down allows you to really understand and be with the person and listen to their breathing patterns and and really just smell their skin and kiss them and enjoy each thing for women that's key i will also say that the way women are different also is that women are not like men in the sense and women this is one of the things that they wanted me to share with you guys <laughs> all the ladies that I interviewed about this, they said, tell them to stop just reaching for our like vagina and just like bruising it and hurting it because we're not ready for it yet. So the way I always describe this to, to clients is men, they love us to just go right for it. Women were the opposite. We want you to touch our hair, our neck, our body, our buttocks, our legs, even our feet, everything. And then with a lot of kissing and then you get to the, the private the last parts. frontier the last frontier exactly <laughs> which is which i get it's completely opposite you're thinking well i love when someone grabs my that's penis the first thing i go for yeah. no that's not the first thing you go for no that's the last thing you the go last for. thing exactly the last thing and it'll be ready and the blood will be down there and it'll be juicy and it'll be great and we'll all have blood down there yes but it, when it rushes down there just like your blood also rushes down there and you'll also start to become more because a lot of people are becoming desensitized with all these images right and so now you're getting back into your body and that's where the real magic in sex happens it happens with connection with mm -hmm. breath and with slowing down and have fun giggle laugh you know it doesn't have to be so serious what i was uh hearing it was interesting i was watching something with this porn star his name is damien dice and he actually says now he only works and honestly i forgot the name of the porn company but he, they only do real porn like they don't stop to like get certain angles they just shoot it Mm. And they, he says, I only deal with women. Like that raw I, footage? Kind of? Yeah, like just like, okay. I guess like almost like, I don't know, amateur. I don't know what it's called, but mm -hmm. he just said it's like normal sex. But I mean, Got of it. course they do things and it's still porn. But what he said, which was interesting, and this is coming from a guy who's a porn star. He said, I look for chemistry with my partners. I don't want to be, I, now that I've reached a certain level, I don't want to just be with whoever and have this thing where they're like, stop. And they make you hold a certain position. He goes, it's painful. It's actually bad for your body. And he goes, and I don't want to be a part of selling something that isn't real mm -hmm. because he goes, I realize the impact that that has on That's people. Great. And he was saying, it was really interesting. He said, you know, they asked him, why do you think women porn stars get paid more? Mm -hmm. And he said, well, the reality is that women can only do one or two scenes a month because you know in terms of like the other you know mm -hmm. traditional porn because of the fact that it's so aggressive it's so just staged and the body can't take it he mm -hmm. said us as male porn performers we're able to do more because we don't have to endure all of that aggression like aggressive you know sex so that's another thing to, to try to kind of get like you know someone had mentioned to me one of the girls that she had recently met someone and she really really liked him and they had a real connection but in sex he was having sex like he was in a porn like she would just be getting into like something in one position and he'd grab her and he'd throw her into something else and she was telling him oh my goodness yeah slow down <laughs> slow down mm -hmm. and there is a place for a little bit of more aggressive sex mm -hmm. that's that's some women enjoy that um I definitely think there's a deeper level of sex that's much more rewarding, mm -hmm. but there's always like room to have a little fun with that if that's something that women are into mm -hmm. and men. But in general, he was just like, he was, it was in a performative, it, the whole thing. And he, she said that he was like moving her so many different positions that like mm -hmm. she's like, I wow. couldn't really get into it because as soon as I was like just about like getting into it, he threw me into something else. <laughs> out <laughs> yeah yeah and he and she said she said like look slow down and he just wasn't getting it and she tried a few times and everything else checked the boxes but it wasn't he wasn't hearing her so don't be afraid to ask questions you know sex is some is a connection it's a dialogue and people like different things so have fun with it ask questions you know share what you like i think a lot of men also don't share what they like yeah you know so get out there and share what you like as well. You're doing just what you've seen, but what about what you would like? That is true. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Do, don't just do what you think she wants. 
do what you also like and ask her what she likes. And obviously you guys have to, you know, agree that it works for the both of you. Mm -hmm. But I definitely recommend that. That was one of the things that was brought up with the ladies that we spoke to about this. Also, the, the whole, I, someone else brought up something interesting. Um, uh, and then I had asked a few other ladies and they said, because I said, there's this whole idea about penis size and what is average, right? And average is, I think was 5.3 inches. And there's measurements. A good friend of ours worked with one of the top urologists. She's a PA. Mm -hmm. And she said, you, you'd be crazy what I see in, in the urology department, <laughs> <laughs> Anna. Um, but, you know, guys, it's the average size is about five inches and in general for women the the level of how hard it is is more important than the size for the most part absolutely what do you think Ange? um hard to argue with that yes <laughs> hard yes. to argue with that yes. and it's just like it's just i guess it's also the motion of the ocean the motion of the are ocean. you feeling it are you vibing it? are you feeling good sometimes that's that's contagious it's kind of like reading a room and set you're reading the sexuality that you got going back and forth, you know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it shows. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Also what men don't realize is that going back to what that guy, Damon Dice was saying, <laughs> the size of the, sorry guys, New York, New York city, New York city. The, the size also is from based on what he said, like, think about it. If you're in a relationship, do you only want to have sex a couple times a month? Because if a guy has a penis the size of a guy in a porn, that's all you're going to be able to handle as a woman. And you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I know. what. Um, it's not all it's cracked up to be, I honestly. Know what you're talking about. But also, it's like, also, you know, what is the point of having something very big? So it's really not about that. It's not about the size. Mm -hmm. It's how you're doing with it and the type of connection that you have with the person yes nothing is more important than that i'm telling you it will be very very painful for a woman to be with you if you're a very big man but you are not connected together mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it won't be fun for you also probably so focus more on having that yes yes and if you happen to be a guy that is well endowed um believe me because i've had these conversations when they're too big sometimes they actually women don't that they're in relationships with opt to not have as much sex because mm -hmm. it's painful you know you can't walk the next day or you end up getting some sort of yeast infection because of the friction with something so big or you end up literally not being able to walk it's for long term it's not fun and that's exactly what they were saying about you know obviously you don't even have to have you know such crazy sex but but the reality is it's hard to be with someone that's that big long term and i'm sure the guys will tell you because i've had conversations with guys that are well endowed it's a double-edged sword and also sometimes they have problems actually getting a really hard erection and all of the women that i talked to said that that the men that had really large penises for the most part tended to have problems keeping a really hard erection. Obviously that's not everyone, but it is something that we as women have noticed. So, so be happy with what you have, you know, make it work for you. It's kind of like us, you know, some of us are born with different curves, different looks, different everything. And as women, men find, us attractive they find it attractive even though like maybe i'm someone's cup of tea maybe angie's maybe i'm not you know someone might see me and think i'm great and see me and say no way and that's okay but it's about how i feel with myself and out there there is someone that will connect with me just like someone that will connect mm -hmm. with angie and i think if you just focus on that in the sensuality in the connection in kissing i mean kissing for women in general is huge i know for me, the most important part for me too if someone doesn't kiss me well it does not continue or go further but that's the beginning of everything right yeah it really is it is so and and i think it's because when you're kissing you really have to be present like you really it's so intimate and so like it's a conversation you know and mm -hmm. if you can do that well then you can do the rest of it well and I think that it's a great way to connect and get out of your head because we all do it and then move into the other stuff and have fun. 
But what we really wanted to emphasize here, guys, is the importance of not feeling that size or your height, because I'll be honest with you, some of the, my biggest loves of my life were not, you know, the tallest or the, the this or the that they were, but they were confident in themselves as a human being. They were confident mm -hmm. in themselves as a human being and how they treated me. I don't know, Ange, what do you think? I agree. And very, and very likely they were also able to connect really well with you. Yes. I, if, they, if there is anything that I could add up to it and we can, you know, we can stress it enough, the fact that you need to connect with the person that you're with and always try to leave all your issues out the door and concentrate on just having the moment, you know? Moments are very important and sometimes they never return. So enjoy it while they're there. Life is only one. Yeah, being in the present moment is key. And when we're stuck in our heads about what we look like, you know, again, for us, it's about our body, how we look. For men, it's about how, what, how their performance. And I always say this, whenever you're in the mindset, because it's a mindset, right, of performance, and this can translate into any space, ask yourself, am I performing here? And if I am, let me get into the space and mindset of connection. And I guarantee you, whether you're with clients, whether you're with your children, whether you're with in any situation that's uncomfortable, if you can just switch that mindset where you're like, okay, I'm just going to focus on connecting here as a human versus performing it ends up taking care of itself. Mm hmm what do you think? You're definitely onto something very good. Yeah. Tidy up too. Keep yourself very clean. Yes, guys. That's another huge thing. We, we like, you know, keep yourself tidy. That is something we notice. Uh, you know, your five senses, not only, you know, obviously, if you think it's about penis size, it's not so much about the anatomy of the women. Maybe you think it's a visual thing, but it's not so much of a big, you know, you guys are really visual. We're not as visual as you. Some women are. Some women wouldn't want to see a big, okay, so that's fine. You know, that's not most women though. But I think in general, most women will agree that hygiene is key. Keep yourself like, you know, fresh, fit. That's why the nutrition also is key because what we ingest comes throughout our, our skin is the largest organ in the body. So what we eat, you know, if we're smoking, if we're eating processed foods, if we're over consuming alcohol, if we're over consuming coffee, we're not consuming enough water, mm -hmm. it does come out in your pores. And that personal smell, those pheromones are also key. Absolutely. And this is, you can actually really do this easily through foods. You know, the, it, it is said that the best, the best food for, for smelling and tasting good down there is the Mediterranean diet. Oh, right. Yeah, which yeah, is yeah. highly based on Lots of uh, vegetables, nuts, uh, sub fish, whole grains. Mm -hmm. So think about the amount of balance that you can f actually have hormonally and down there for just the way that you can taste and smell. There is also certain other foods that are very good for you. And we hear very often about the fact that you can have certain things that are shaped like certain organs, like stuff that's shaped like oysters oh what does oyster i don't know oyster remind you of or you can oh. have or you can have avocados what do avocados remind you of but in reality it's not only about the fact that this uh type of fruits may fruits or foods may look sexual or they may take the shape of an organ but actually the ingredients and the nutrients that wow. these specific foods can have so wow. you know for example zinc you can get mm. actually from oysters. So what they say about the oysters might be right, but not because of the shape, rather than the nutrients that these type of fruits have. Right. The same thing with chocolate, which has a, which has a happiness ingredient in it. So you want to have that. What else can you have? Uh, foods that are high in vitamin C, they actually could make your 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 cum <laughs> taste better. And this goes for both women and men. So certain things, uh, you can have a uh, natural cranberry juice, the non-sugary one. Mm. That's another thing that you can have. Things that are high in vitamin C. Mm. 
Mm. Things that are high in flavonoids. Things that are high in zinc. What else can you have that's that? Uh, nuts are very good for you as well. Have whole grains. The um, fatty fishes, right? Yeah. Like salmon. Yes. Sardines. Omegas. Yes. Omegas are very important. Omega threes. So just kind of like not only think about the fact that all of this looks just looks so sexy, but it's actually the ingredients in it. That's the sexy part. The nutrients. Not only will they help you move around and have a better day at the office, but also they'll help you have better, better sex. Better sex, yeah, and better health. Better which, health, which is that and you loop. taste better too. Your taste will be right, better. Right. Yes to the fruit. Yes to what they say about pineapples. Have it. It's the fruit. You need to have that type of stuff. I'm not talking about sugar. I'm not talking about anything else other than the natural fruit. Right. That is what will get you there. Stay away from asparagus. You don't want asparagus in your body whenever you are needing to have sexy fun time. Both women and men okay. don't do it. I like asparagus. Um, onions, raw onions, stay away from it. All of that will change the composition of your fluids for your comb. Both women and men and the way you taste, the way you smell. And your breath. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Stay away from Spanish fly. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's like supposed that, that was being pushed, right? A lot for, um, for yes. the erection. And basically, when you have too much of it, you can have issues with your kidneys, mm. issues with your organs. They could, you could cause acid reflux. That is another terrible side effect from it. Lucky enough, they don't sell that in the US. But if you are living, if you live in another country, just be very aware that this is not something that you should put in your system. Spanish fly does not work at all. I think you're just spending more on just having the real connection rather than terrible foods that will not help you. Right, right, right. And and also just like just breathing and all the things that just make your body healthy. Because I work a lot with men and the whole issue of like masculinity. One of the most beautiful things is, which some women are not getting, but it, it is naturally what we seek. We seek the leadership from men. And that doesn't mean a, it has nothing to do with domination. It has nothing to do with control. We can step into our feminine energy and our feminine space, which is where we drop that whole idea of the safety issue, right? Because when we're, when we're in that safety mode, we're actually stepping into our masculine energy because that's how we protect ourselves. So actually women who are highly masculine and are angry, I don't need men and, 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 and I feel compassion for them because Obviously, nobody needs anyone to pay their bills. We all know that equality is one thing, but it's very different than are we the same? And we are not the same, okay? We can be equal, but we are not the same. And I think people, uh, you know, confuse those two. And we're not the same because we have different needs and we have different ways of expressing ourselves. And we have to, and so this is where the feminine and masculine energies, and we need, we use both, right? When, when we're getting things done and, and we're protecting ourselves, women are stepping into their masculine energy containment and like men who hold space for me to feel safe from my gay friends, from my brother, from my father. So it's not a sexual thing. Mm -hmm. It's a energetic thing. And so don't be afraid to tap into your masculine energy. It's what's really going to connect you to your essence. Feminine energy is being energy, which sometimes men, you just have to also be. And the masculine energy is the doing energy. And so when men are in their doing energy, which is where they thrive, we as women get to just be which is where we thrive. And then we inspire each other. And like I said, it doesn't necessarily, it could be someone that you're just dancing with one night that you never see again, but yet you think, oh, wow, that was fun. That felt great. Because when a woman is dancing and she feels safe and she's, there's nothing more beautiful than to see a woman in that space. Mm -hmm. And men love that because you're like, wow, you, you, you're experiencing that. Nothing dominating or toxic about that. I agreed 100% safety make us feel safe that is the most important thing and you mm -hmm. know what being on as a woman to be actually doing the masculine energy thing for us is mm. exhausting it is it's, it's very... exhausting so just make sure that you know that we need that we need you to give us that because sometimes especially in the world in which we live in and if you're like us we live in new york city we step into being bosses and doing things all the time whenever we can actually take a step back 
from being and leading, it feels amazing. Yes, it really does. It really does. You feel like you're home. Just mm-hmm. like you feel as men when you're in your sense, like the divine masculine, you feel at home. We feel at home when we're able to be just be in our energy. And so this is another reason why we need you guys. I know that in the world, it can seem like these women have taken over who are saying we don't need you. And, and there's all these nasty, ugly things that are going on. But I don't want to use the word fight back because I want you to do it in a way where not the way the feminist movement did it like most movements there's like real there's something good that it was supposed to become of it but then the pendulum swings in the other direction such as with the me too Mm -hmm. movement and then you have people who are real victims now who are not heard because of these other people who are just attention seekers or drama queens or just haven't dealt with like their own personal childhood traumas and they manifest them now in this space where they get this attention or this validation that they seek and unfortunately what it's done is it's shut a lot of men down and then what it does to women who aren't like that we're wondering like where are you guys and this is not reality so what i always tell men is don't do it the way the feminist movement did have a movement where we can get you guys back but speak to women's greatness don't speak to all the shit that they're doing not all of them of course i'm talking about a subset of people who are on both extremes right we have the men like that and the women like that most of us are not in that space right so we have to make sure that we don't generalize that we don't put all women in that category because we're comrades in struggle we have different struggles because we are different right we can be equal but we are different but we don't have to bash each other and i think that if men can start to create a movement which is like i always encourage this and i actually really want to be a part of this movement to bring our men back because we need you right the world can't be and continue the way it is and get better and really be beautiful if we don't get you guys back being happy being healthy being in your masculine energy being able to do what you what you love doing which is to to help to provide to to be heard to be understood to be seen so to not be made wrong you know and i think the key way to do that is to not do with with the feminist movement i do believe that it had good intentions like every movement but it's just has swung in such a direction that i think we need to kind of swing it back and that's pretty much it, guys. That's uh, that's it. Yes, I don't know, Anne. Do you have anything? Sense. Yeah. Do you yeah. have anything else to add? Thank you. So I'm getting much. hungry. <laughs> Thank you. Oh my God, I'm starving. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much for inviting me. I I've been wanting to do this for a long time with you, and just uh, kind of uh, really be able to shine a light with you about these important issues. We do need our men to to stand for who they are and how they are. And I love the fact that you are a voice for that. Yes, and you, you too, Ange, you too. So we're here for you, okay? Let us know if there's any other subjects that you'd like us to touch on. Like I said, we we did this casually. We're literally on our way to go have dinner. Get out there, have fun, be who you are. Try to find your authentic self. Remember that it takes work. We all are a work in progress. We all are a continuous work in progress, and it's never ending. If you have any questions or you have any comments, we would love to hear it. So thank you. Have a good night, and we'll see you soon.